Now let's demonstrate the ion motor. I'll show you what a spark gap is. Let's plug it in. Don't play with these. These are highly electrical and very dangerous. Ion motors. If you have an ion motor around someone that has a heart capacitor, they will die. And you will become a murderer. So do not toy with ion motors in the paranormal field or any electronic devices before you know its risks. You got that? Now, what will happen if a person were to touch it? Or maybe a better question is, should a person touch it? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Okay, Ray, give me one eye outside. Ray! <laughs> Danger! Do not try performing this video at home. Microwave electric shock can be deadly. Давайте посмотрим. I did that. I did that. That's my fault. It's okay. The table broke the fall. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. Do you guys know what uh, what voltage is? Yes. What does voltage measure? Is that actually a measurement of energy per charge? Um, do you know how many volts are in a flashlight battery? One of those D cells. 1.5. Very good. How many volts in a 9-volt battery? Nine. nine. Yeah, that's why they call it a 9-volt battery. How many volts come out of the wall? 120. About 120. How many volts on that? When that thing's running well, that's about 200,000. Okay, so think about... An enormous manifestation of energy that I can see on the camera. We're actually measuring these energies. We're seeing these things happen, and it's not just someone saying, I, I have a weird feeling. They'll light up in, in blue and purple, depending on how far down in the ultraviolet spectrum the, the lights. Now these are picking up different light energies. Yes. As soon as we finished setting up the equipment, we immediately began seeing unexplained activity. If your main concern is looking at it, the, the couch and the chair and the things that are in the room. And there's a, there's a, a great way that you use that is to establish what is in the room so you can see it. But my couple analogies that I make with this is if you have a Christmas tree and you have the lights on the Christmas tree, you don't turn all the lights on in the room and put big floodlights on it to see the lights. You turn all the lights off to see the lights. And they don't necessarily get you at that time. Many people get it after they leave. So let's talk about the weakest one in the group. I understand um, there's a woman named Missy. That was a scientific team that came in that were a group of skeptics. And this was a group that used your name. We are ones that we like to go in and actually do an investigation ourselves find proof of what we can actually, Absolutely. you know. So you just wanted to go in, investigate, and find your own findings? Correct. I like that. A skeptic that has to get evidence for themselves to be convinced. So we started on the first floor and we set up all of our cameras. And then it was time to go down into the basement. We were going to bring in some Bibles. We were going to bring in some crucifixes. We were going to bring in some trigger objects. Can I stop you right there? Yes. When you brought in those Bibles, did Wanda Kay see your Bibles? Yes. What did she tell you about those Bibles? She told us we were allowed to bring them in, but she was not going to be any part of it. Okay. What did you think about that? Because a lot of people use Bibles for protection. What did you think when Wanda told you she wasn't going to be any part of it if you're bringing these Bibles in? Well, I knew she was afraid that we were stirring up something that we shouldn't be stirring up. And I think she was truly fearful for what was going to happen with us bringing them in. That's when they said, we paid our money. We deserve to give it a try. So that's what they want. That's what they wanted. Did you keep the Bibles in? Yes. Because at this point, you're still skeptical. Correct. Of this place. Exactly. Right? You're still right. skeptical. So what happened? I felt like something grabbed me by the tops of my shoulders and picked me up and threw me backwards. 
that girl went straight back onto a concrete floor about 10 feet behind me. How far me. did her feet go off the floor? About like that. Everybody saw what happened, and I literally just went down to the ground. I ended up on the ground. Ah! All right. Okay. There goes the ball. All right, pause for a second. You just suffer what, what I think is possibly an attack. You get pushed or something. But one of these guys, all they care about is his ball. <laughs> you will also notice that one person never even moves his camera in my direction. If you're looking for light anomaly type evidence in a room or you're, you're monitoring for that, you don't really care what the room looks like. You want to know if something lights up on its own. Now, the other problem with the infrared light is reflection. You've got a big floodlight shining out into the room. Any particle, any little bit, any bug, anything that's flying through the air, it's going to reflect back into the camera, and you're going to go, oh, oh, look, there was a thing that just went by. Well, that thing that went by, if you're using a flash on a still camera, or if you're using some type of an illuminator, an infrared illuminator, on a night vision camera, it's not very impressive because it could have been anything. It doesn't mean it wasn't something funky, but to tell the difference is almost impossible um, between the two. So we've got some examples. I didn't know that, did you open I did not open it. You know what, it was probably Ed and the guy who didn't put his pants. Uh-uh-uh-uh. Right over there. I didn't even know he did that. Super heavy in here. Right here. Yep, it's right there. Right by that mark. I'm not touching that thing. I'll try. The moment Dallin touches the satanic mark. Where's Jay? Jay drops to the ground, complaining of a sharp pain in the side of his head. My whole side of my head is just pounding, and I keep getting that drilling. I keep red his ears. hearing that hiss, whispery sound, too. It's like my ears, man. Incredibly, Dallin, who is unaware of what's happening to Jay, starts experiencing a similar affliction. Damn, Jay, this isn't good, bro. All of a sudden, behind Jay's ear, a dark red spot begins to appear. It's like hard to catch my breath, you know? Do you see it? Within the red bruise-like mark, white marks that appear to look like symbols. begin to emerge. Looks like an X and a 1. I don't know how much longer I can be in here, man. I'm right there with you. Yeah, it's weird, dude. I've never seen anything like this before. Definitely the APX shift. Yes, yes for sure. That's... Guys? Oh, my God. That's where 
Harvard Center. Distinction Reform. Oh, it's not what I thought. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'm gonna try to talk to him. Just be careful. You should be malevolent. Just, just make sure you're recording. I'm getting him. Just be cautious. I think she wants to communicate with us. Anyone, anyone, anyone. It's okay. It's just it's peaceful. You're gorgeous. <laughs> Hello, hi. Um, my name is Erin Gilbert, Dr. Park Physics. <laughs> Microscopic particle spontaneously clone itself in midair? After years of study, scientists still don't know exactly what's happening. Probably the most magical thing is that in quantum physics, an object can be in more than one place at the same time. It actually can sense both slits and actually go through and quantum mechanically feel the structure of both slits in the experiment. Most physicists agree that the math is quite solid and leads to solutions that are undeniable and can be confirmed with experimental measurements. But exactly what is happening and how is a matter of debate. To try to grasp this amazing experimental result, scientists decided to observe how individual electrons behaved when they went through the double slit. How exactly could a particle go through both holes at the same time? Thank <laughs> you. 